This is Matilda, Part Two. Daddy, she said, "Do you think you could buy me a book?" A book, he said. What do you want a flaming book for? To read, Daddy. What's wrong with the telly? For heaven's sake, we've got a lovely telly with a twelve-inch screen, and now you come asking for a book. You're getting spoiled, my girl. Nearly every weekday afternoon, Matilda was left alone in the house. Her brother, five years older than her, went to school. Her father went to work, and her mother went out playing bingo, in a town eight miles away. Mrs. Wormwood was hooked on bingo and played it five afternoons a week. On the afternoon of the day when her father had refused to buy her a book, Matilda set out all by herself to walk to the public library in the village. When she arrived, she introduced herself. To the librarian, Mrs. Phelps, she asked if she might sit a while and read a book. Mrs. Phelps, slightly taken aback at the arrival of such a tiny girl, unaccompanied by a parent, nevertheless told her she was very welcome. Where are the children's books, please? Matilda asked. They're over there on those lower shelves, Mrs. Phelps told her. Would you like me to help you find a nice one with lots of pictures in it? No, thank you, Matilda said. I'm sure I can manage. From then on, every afternoon. As soon as her mother had left for bingo, Matilda would toddle down to the library. The walk took only ten minutes, and this allowed her two glorious hours, sitting quietly by herself in a cosy corner, devouring one book after another. When she had read every single children's book. In the place, she started wandering round in search of something else. Mrs. Phelps, who had been watching her with fascination for the past few weeks, now got up from her desk and went over to her. "Can I help you, Matilda?" she asked. I'm wondering what to read next," Matilda said. "I've finished all the children's books," 